Welcome to Chapter 4, Section 4.1, Classifying Triangles. A lot of this should be review, but we just need to touch a few points and apply it to the geometry that we know now so that it's, you know, upper level geometry and not your geometry from 7th grade. Alright, so we're going to classify these triangles. We can classify them by angles or we can uh, can classify them by sides. <clears throat> so, if you're classifying by angles, it's kind of like what kinds of angles do you have? You can have an acute triangle, okay? And that means all of your angles are acute. That makes sense, doesn't it? Let's see if you can draw a nice little acute triangle. And let's just make sure, of course, there's so many just ways to draw a triangle that well, it's getting close to not being acute, but this is definitely, that looks pretty darn acute to me. Okay, that's an acute triangle. You could have, let's see what other kind of angles can you have. If you have one, <coughs> you can have, if you have one right angle, then you automatically have a right triangle. Let's see if I can draw one of those somewhat quickly. Okay, now I've got to kind of scrunch that up. I just need to have a right angle somewhere in there. And that's too typical to have a right. Blah, 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 there. Oh, isn't that a lovely right triangle? Something like that. And it does need to be either noted in your writing or in the instructions or in the picture. They've got to put a right in there, a right angle. Otherwise, you don't really know. It like, might look like it, but you don't know unless you have enough information to show that it is. Okay? So if it's not acute and it's not right, what's basically left? Well, we could have an obtuse triangle. Oh, how much fun would it be to draw an obtuse triangle? Let me get a triangle up there. And now I'm going to make this. There we go. This angle right here, and all it takes is one. You can't actually have a triangle with two obtuse angles. All it takes is one angle to be more than 90 degrees as is shown right here. This angle is more than 90 degrees, so that's going to make it an obtuse triangle. I do want to point out there's a special type of an acute triangle. It's when all of the angles are the same. They would all be 60 degrees, and we call that special case equiangular. So that's like the word for equiangular. And that is, if I can just draw a perfect, perfect triangle, who says this is the perfect one, but we're going to call all of those 60 degrees, and that's equiangular. And it's a type, kind of a special type of an acute triangle. All right, if we classify by sides, we can have no sides be congruent. Okay, no sides that are congruent. Then it would look something... Like this. I think I have there. We're going to call those three different sides. The special word we use for that, I think this is the weirdest word, scalene. <laughs> I don't know why I have to say it like that, but I just do. Scalene triangle. Okay? Now, that's when no sides are the same. Since that's a new word, no sides are congruent. Okay? You could have, well, you can't have one side the same, but you could have two sides the same. All right, if you have two sides the same, oh, that's a lovely example of an isosceles triangle. Okay, isosceles means two sides are the same. So we have iso, that part of the word means equal, and this part of the word means scale, so you have two sides that are equal, and oftentimes all we do is put like a little mark there and a little mark there, and those two sides are congruent, and of course this is typical, I could turn this triangle any direction, of course these marks aren't going to move with it at this point, but isosceles, it's still isosceles, it's still isosceles, okay, so I don't want you to think that just because I didn't have my point up at the top of that, oh my gosh, I can't even say that. So. Be careful, that's your stereotypical isosceles triangle, but even if I turn it, it's still isosceles. And then what would it be if I have three sides that were congruent? And you're like, is it equal angular, Mrs. Tally? 
Well, that's when we're classifying by angles. But when you classify by sides, you have three sides that are congruent. You have to have some kind of marking or way of knowing that. And then you would say it is equal lateral. Okay, equal lateral. Think of a lateral pass. I always think of sideways, so equal sides. All right, enough with that. Something you should already know. Kind of a quick review. Example one, find D and the measure of each side of an equilateral triangle, KLM, if these sides are given as such. So let's go ahead and look at our triangle here. Um, K, L, M, draw a picture. You're going to have to start by drawing a picture. K, L is D plus 2. L, N is 12 minus D. And KM is 4B minus 13. Okay, now your first thought, and this is what students try to do, they try to set all three of these equal to each other. If it's equilateral, really to solve for D, I only need to set two of the three equal to each other. I just, you can't even solve it if you've got 13, or three of them congruent. So D plus 2 could be equal, or has to be equal to 4D minus 13. But you know what? If you wanted, you could set 4D minus 13 equal to 12 minus D. And somebody else could set, I don't know what, 12 minus D equal to D plus 2, and we should all get the same answer. But I am only going to show you one of those three. So 3D minus 13 equals 2. Add 13 to both sides. Now I have 3D equals 15, and now D equals 5. Okay, if D equals 5, I have found the value of D and the measure of each side. So now I'm going to go back up in here. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 minus, minus 13 is 7. Now most of us are going to be like, it's equilateral, so all the sides should be 7. But if I were taking a quiz or a test, I would just do a quick little check. 5 plus 2 is 7. And then just do one more check. Is 12 minus 5 7? Yes, it is. So we've definitely done the math right there on that one. Example number two, find x and the measure of the unknown sides of the triangle. Once again, I did a stereotypical isosceles triangle. It looks to be obtuse. Um, well, I only have two sides that are congruent, so I will set those two sides equal to each other. And then I'm going to solve. And as I do so, I find out that x is equal to 3. So I found x equal to 3. I'm going to find my side here. It's got a total length of 12 because I take 4 times 3. Let me just do a quick double check. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. So I like the way they match, so I've probably done it correct. I've answered my question. Moving on. Example 3. Find the measure of the sides of triangle RST and classify it by its sides. Technically, I don't have a lot of these on your homework because they get a little monotonous and repetitive, but I still want us working on a couple skills. The one thing I don't think you need to do this with graph paper. I've got graph paper up here, but technically, if you just use distance formula over and over again, you will find the three lengths of the side, or three side lengths. So, I will do the distance formula, but I'm also going to show you the graph, but on your homework, you don't even have to graph. So R is at negative 1, negative 3. S is at 4, 4. And T is at 8. Oh, I'm going off the screen just a little bit. 8, negative 1 are off the graph. Okay, so there's my triangle. All right. And a lot of you, be careful. Some kids just still want to find slope to get from here to here. We're not going to slope. We have to find the distance. And don't tell me you're going to count these little squares here. That's not how we find distance. We have to use the distance formula. A uh, quick review of that in case you've forgotten. Uh, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1. It doesn't matter if you do your x's or your y's first. You just have to work through the process. So here we go. I've got um, 4. I'm going to find the distance between r and s. So I've got 4 minus negative 1. So I'm going to write down 4 plus 1. And then I'm going to have the y values. So I have 4 minus negative 3. So that's 4 plus 3 squared. This is all under the radical. 
So now I keep going. I have 5 squared plus 7 squared, which is equal to 25 plus 49, which gives me the square root of 74. I'm just going to leave that in radical form. That is my distance from R to S. Square root 74. The other sneaky way is you could draw right triangles off of these and do Pythagorean theorem. Um, but once again, I'm going to try to shy away from doing it on the graph. All right, so now I've got the distance from R to S. What do I still need to find? We'll go to a different color here. We're going to go the distance from S to T. So now I'm going to have to use the distance formula again. I'm going to go 8 minus 4, quantity squared, and then I'm going to do negative 1 minus 4, quantity squared. 8 minus 4 is 4 squared plus negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5 squared, which is going to give me 16 plus 25. Do, 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 do. That looks like a square root of 41. Okay, so that was from S to T, square root 41. Moving right along, I still have to find my third side. I mean, this could still be an isosceles triangle. And we're just like, oh, what could it be? Could it really be an isosceles triangle? Let's just see. Um, now I'm going to find the distance from R to T. So now I'm going to take D equals uh, 8 minus negative 1. So I put down plus 1. And then I'm going to go negative 1 minus negative 3, so that's plus 3. Now I've got 9 squared plus 2 squared, 81 plus 4. Oh, square root of 85 it looks like. So this is square root of 85, which means no sides are the same. So I have to classify it by its sides. If no sides are the same, I have that lovely scaling triangle. And that's the end of our lesson. And the reason why I picked this lovely picture here is because of the mountains. They kind of reminded me of triangles. <laughs>